And we're live! Which champion will take the cake? Which rose above the ranks and which were disappointments? Like me to my parents. Can they be salvaged? Who is our favorite? And there's so many questions, I cannot wait to answer them all today. So, let's go ahead and get started. Hey guys, and welcome back to another Pro Guides Team Fight Tactics video. Today we're going to be going over a tier list of the new champions who just joined the Convergence and Festival of Beasts. We did not do a patch rundown for 11.2 since we talked a lot about set 4.5 and there's no real reason to essentially repost our content. We'll be checking out what champions are best performing in the PvE, our view on them, comps they can work with, and items they use as well. Before we dive in, I just want to let you guys know that we have a Discord community and a new subreddit that's growing really fast. We have all of you to thank for that, and we want to continue building our community and helping you guys become a part of it. Make sure you check the link in the description down below. And as for our question of the day, who is your favorite champion joining in set 4.5, and why is it Orn? S tier. Well, they really brought in the big guns for the legendaries. There is no way we cannot include all three SS. They really were, what was that word that we used two weeks ago? Wacky. Yep, starting off with the main man in the dragon cloak, Swain comes in as a new dragon soul and is really taking names. His exceptional survivability in the front line is commendable on its own, due to its own base stats being pretty insane. To top it all off, he's also a siphoner, healing himself for 40% of the insane damage that he deals, giving him some healing to the team as well. If you run four siphoners, well, he's immortal, unless one shot. His spell is a free Morella but better, and his mana cost is not that big, only at 40 or 100 initially. Dragon Soul gives him extra oomph tanking him up even further and granting him the extra single target damage. Swain excels in Dragon Soul comps and only needs at least one Siphoner, probably Morgana, with him. However, the Dragon Soul buff is, as we said, a bit of an oomph and just that. It's now extremely mandatory and his attack speed isn't amazing enough to benefit from the buff too much. A case can be made for giving the buff to Shivana and having Swain as a frontliner as she jumps back, as he is fairly plug and play if you have a Morgana and will definitely be a super strong addition to your comp. He likes items that make him tankier, as most of his damage is based on opponent's health, so it's not that affected by AP. Warmogs is quite good, making him extra tanky, Ionic Spark, Bramble, or Dragon's Claw. You can also build Hand of Justice, and of course, GA or QS are all also good on him. Orn is the coolest. The only thing that's not the coolest is the four turn wait time, but boy is it worth it when he completes that item. He is fairly weak, even with his items, in a late game situation if he's a one star, but he takes off at two star. Don't be surprised if often there's no Orn to headbutt the ram into stunning enemies. He does die pretty quickly. Still, the item that he crafts is what we're there for. Orn is a win more or capstone champion, not really a comeback one. He won't save you if you get him at 10 HP. However, if you get him at 60 plus HP, you will get at least two items before you die or win, provided that you aren't losing every single match. He is part of any comp that can fit him really. Comps that actually make use of his trait are anything with Elderwood, which hasn't really taken off yet, and Vanguard Mystic with Nico or Aurelian Soul Carry. The latter one operates like Metal Gear Snake from set 3 or Vanguard Mystic Ari from set 4. I prefer the Nico version, provided that you get a Fabled Chosen. We went over Orin's crafted items a week ago, and all of them are extremely strong and applicable into pretty much any comp. They are a little bit physical damage friendlier, so running him with comps like Samira, Zaya, Trinimir, and the like provides more targets for his crafts in comparison to a mage comp. As for items for the man himself, Sander Tank is good. He's a CC bot outside of his crafting and his mana bar is huge, not really worth mana items. Last but not least in the S tier, Samira. When she uses her spell, things will melt and die, so you want her to use it as much as possible and with the right traits. She has a few tools for survivability, including her spell and her shields giving her max health percentage shielding, so it's not bad to include items with giant belt in her build. You want to position her carefully at the beginning to have a good first target. The target itself doesn't really matter, but you want her in a position where when she dashes, it's not into every AoE imaginable and a Trindamere, so yeah. Be careful there. It's really good to have 3 Slayer with Samira, preferably Olaf and Trinamir, but you can make use of a Chosen if you want. 6 Slayer is a little bit of a bait, and it's better to go for Dragon Soul and other traits, including more carries to the mix like Shivana. You also definitely need Sharpshooter to get the most out of her spell. As you probably noticed, Samira is not really as plug and play as the other two, due to her kit working best when used with both of her traits. You can still forego Slayer, but her survivability and damage definitely decreases. Still, she can do a lot with that even. As for items, any offensive AD items are good, especially some orange stuff like Obsidian Cleaver. Bloodthirster is an interesting one since she'll be healing full time every time she uses her spell. Deathblade is incredible since she scales off of AD too, same for Infinity Edge. While she doesn't particularly need a defensive item, Quicksilver is good to get her into that first spell. A tier. 
What a beast. It's really fun to see Olaf just charge down the line and survive as the last unit, healing for metric tons and soloing the entire enemy team. What remains of it? A great addition to the physical damage dealers of this set. He does really well in fitting that heavy damage dealing berserker in the front line and is a great carry for Dragon Soul Slayer comps. He is a really good chosen as well in either trait. You can use him as a carry or more of a synergy bot, but he's almost always worth throwing an item or two on. Depending on your items, if you find him early, he can be a comp guiding bot, where you can get him and build a comp around him, unlike champions like Morgana. His CC immunity and splash damage make him pretty impossible to control, and he doesn't really need rapid fire cannon anymore, like in set 2, as you want him to dip a little bit lower in health to make Slayer work better. His favorite items are Deathblade, GA, and Runins, but he's fairly flexible and can use many different ones as well, like Infinity Edge and Giant Slayer. Mort Dog's favorite champion is back. There's not much to say about Kale, she is incredible. She is not good without Executioner and needs the comp to be built around for her to succeed. She is undoubtedly the carry of the Executioner trait, though Zaya is not that far behind. There's a few variations of Kale comps that you can go, which is really nice, since she basically only needs Divine and 3 Executioners to be at a high level of power. The rest of the trait combinations, including Chosens, are yours to decide and the shop to deliver. The depth version of Kale Comp is my favorite though. Her items are quite straightforward, Ginsu's Rapid Fire Cannon and a defensive item, preferably GA. You can also use Hand of Justice instead of Rapid Fire or Ginsu's, though the game will mature to a level where RFC is core on her, like in set 3 and Ginsu's becomes an optional item. I'm so glad that we don't have a mage that is absolutely broken in the 4 cost category, right? Aurelian is really strong for a 4 cost, but is not broken like Ari was, to the point where nerfing them to the ground and pretending like they don't exist for 2 months was actually a viable strategy for the design team to make. Aurelian has traits that work well with his kit as well, needing that second cast to be truly good, again, unlike Ari. The reason that we're outlining the differences is because we expect more longevity from him as a carry. Position him well, give him 5 or 7 mage, and you got your carry. He works as a carry to 5 mage, 2 vanguard, or 7 mage comps, and is also quite decent as a Dragon Soul off carry in the Vanguard Mystic or Dragon Soul comps that use either one of them as their carries. The best items on him include GA, Gunblade, and an AP item, either Rabidons or Jeweled Gauntlet. Because of Kale, Zaya is flying a little bit under the radar, but she's still really solid. Her spell can downright one-shot the entire team if she has 3 Executioner and enough AD and some AP. You need to position her really well in the beginning, preferably in a corner or at least attacking a target with some more champions behind them. Then sit back and enjoy the Featherworks. As for items, she does hybrid damage, but her auto attacks are strong with Executioner, so AD is a little bit better overall, as it plays a bigger part of her damage profile. Zeke's is also actually decent on her, to buff Kale up as well, but it makes positioning a little bit awkward at times. The Orin Trinity Force is incredible on her, giving her all the stats that she can use. Nico is the first 3 cost chosen in the aids here. She is an extraordinary carry when Fabled is on, and she comes with some good items. She downright deletes entire teams. She doesn't have to be the one chosen Fable, but if she is, with the extra stats? <laughs> Ouch. She is the carry to Vanguard Mystic Fabled comps right now, which is enough to mirror her an A tier, as those comps are performing quite well. They are not easy to get to, but you can use a mage early game to carry Nico items. You shouldn't plug and play Nico, as without Fabled, her damage is really weak, and you'll be struggling to kill things. Her best items are blue buff, hand of justice, or defensive item, and Rabidons or jeweled gauntlet. Definitely second favorite champion the set so far. The Dragon Girl is back in action and she's hurting people. Shivana has taken Kindred's place as the best 3 cost carry stabilizer in the game, and getting her quite early will result in a win streak. Give her some AP or attack speed items and let her out of her feeble humanoid form. She scales really well with attack speed and is an excellent carrier of Olaf or Kale items. If you want to actually make her a carry, you want a healthy mix of survivability and damage. While she is not part of any specific comps as a carry, her traits are decent and she often makes it into late game Dragon Soul carry comps. Sivir, a necessity in Kale comps and just by that, seeing how strong they are, Sivir makes it into the A tier. Her attack speed buff is really good and she can even carry a little bit in the mid game as a sharpshooter if you haven't found a Shivana to put Kale items on. In cultist comps, she can do her fair job as a carry, but those have been looking to non-cultist carries at the moment. Zeke's is by far the best item on her, to further boost the attack speed of whoever you want to use her boost on. Similarly to Sivir, Kindred is sort of a necessity if you don't find an executioner chosen. Still, it's only because Shivana exists that Kindred isn't the queen of the early and mid game. Her spell does a humongous amount of damage, and if you get her as a chosen executioner early, woe to your enemies. That's a first for you. 
She can work with many different items, but AP and mana items work best on her, like blue buff, hand of justice, and jeweled gauntlet, and so on. Finally, Morgana, who heals a ton now with Siphoner, is going to be the go-to peer for Swain. Give her Morella and watch her burn your enemies to a crisp. Then Lightning Comp hasn't arrived yet, but you can add her in variations of the Kale Comp that use Swain and Adept. You can also play an Enlightened Comp with Adept and Siphoner, but it lacks a little bit of damage and is slow to pick up. If it does pick up though, it's impossible to kill and was really fun piloting in the PvE. As always, Morello is the only item that she needs to shine, but more AP is always welcome. Beads here. The big guy has some unfortunate traits right now. Brawler is not looking too good, and his spell can go really haywire if Fable is not up. Still, he's not bad per se, hence the B rating. He can still be part of a non-chosen Fable comp that can afford to run another Brawler to make him a little bit tankier. You may not even run another one and just go for a Vanguard Mystic route, utilizing Nautilus and Nico traits more. He likes tanky items like Warmox, Ionic Spark, and Bramble Slash Dragon Claw. He's also fairly fun to play if you have a Mage Comp and you have a Spatula Mage on him. It was quite interesting and fun seeing him cast twice. A decent champion so far, but suffers a little bit from the Warlord part, ending up a bit of a Synergy Slayer bot. Duelists are finding it hard to take off the ground, but once the hubbub of new stuff dies down a bit, it's possible that we could go back to seeing Yasuo Chosen and Trinimer alongside another. Another, slashing fools to ribbons. Without enough attack speed, Trinimer finds it hard to keep his Slayer healing and is vulnerable to CC. You can see him in Slayer comps as a side carry or a synergy bot. Hopefully more players are trying out Warlord or Duelist versions and they'll give us more data on how good he really is. Till then, B tier it is. As for items, Rapid Fire, Ginsu's, and AD like Deathblade and IE are really good to help him with his spell damage a bit as well. He really needs Guardian Angel though to give him a second chance after CC hits him. Darius is a really cool chosen. He differs from Jinx since she could actually carry and Darius is not that sort of fortune champion. He definitely will be able to help you kill more units that you're able to, especially if you give him a couple of items. Still, without any damage and CC support, you will lose which is what you want to do with Fortune anyway. If you see a chosen Fortune Darius, buy it in the mid game for sure. He is more of a transitionary carry, who can use Aurelian Soul items, Yoni items, even kill once if you really want to force it. Make sure you play him with Fortune and, if you can, Pike and Zed to get Slayer. The man is in the C tier. <laughs> C as in, because it's Nautilus chilling with his anchor as usual. His ultimate is single target instead of AoE like it used to be, and that has taken some power off of it. With Fabled and if he's a 2 star, he becomes a decent tank in the front line and that's the only reason he is not lower to be honest. You'll see him in Vanguard Mystic Comps and you don't really want to itemize him unless it's for something like a tank or an item. Our resident Hemomancer is really fun in the early game. He has really good early game traits, pair him with Nasus and two Cultists or one if you find him chosen, and he can carry some AP items for a bit. Since it's early and there's no explosive AoE, you can bunch him up with your champions, put him up in the front, and watch him heal everyone. He falls off really hard though, so don't hesitate to transition away from him unless you get to play Cultist. Speaking of Cultist, Pike is a bit lower than he used to be in the previous meta, where he was the best 2 cost. He's not too far away from being the best now, and the extra trait he gained helped his inclusion more in comps. You can see Pike in Cultist comps and is really nice as a third slayer besides Olaf and Trinomir. Between you and me, I might keep Pike for the CC and replace Trinomir with Samira down the line. It all depends on what your comp needs, but the 3 Cultist plus X opener is still really strong in the early game. Keeper hasn't really been making waves yet, but we believe it will slowly get there especially now that it's been connected to Elderwood. Rakan does really well into the early game, CCing a ton of people and if you get a Jarvan or Kenna to help you out with survivability, even better. He falls off unless you actually play Elderwood, but he's an interesting chosen as well. If you want to use him as an item carry, he is good with mana and or tank items like blue buff, shoujin, zizi ra, and so on. Braum is not that good, he's just so passive of a unit and without Dragon Soul, he really is just a blob of stone. With Dragon Soul, it's not too terrible, but you still don't want him to get the buff in the early game since he'll be the last one to die, ending up with weird positioning. In the late game, you don't mind too much as you have Shivana and Swain who will gladly take all the blessing off his hands. If you want to itemize him, use standard tank items, perhaps something off of Orn if you have itemized other tanks already. 
The Doggo isn't that great either, ending up being in the D tier. He's not terrible early game as a synergy bot, but he has no place outside of meme comps in either mid or late game. Nasus Chosen isn't so bad early on, especially if you can get a tank comp going, which can use Siphoner as well. Other than that, don't itemize him unless you play meme builds, like Mage Nasus, etc. Then build AP and Hand of Justice or blue buff on him to spam his spell as much as possible. Zed without Shade just can't survive. Even with Rapid Fire, Cannon, and the Slayer healing, he melts, since he jumps into the enemy backline. However, he's fairly strong early on into the game, and can be a great Kale or Olaf item carry. Without Slayer, he will find it hard to deal enough damage, but you should be able to find Slayers or use him as a Chosen if you get him, since he's pretty strong in that regard. Poor Chisana isn't having a great time, but is doing okay for her cost. Plenty of 3-star Chisana reroll builds have been thrown around, but the power just isn't there, with many later game carries literally one-shotting her. A funny tactic early on is if you get loaded dice and Tristana chosen, you can use the dice on her and get a 3 free star chosen early. Then build that up and play some other comps. You can even sell that 3 star as painful as it can feel. She likes 80 items a lot, and while attack speed is decent, it's not amazing on her. You can build static shiv on her along with affinity edge and transfer them elsewhere. F tier. Poor Brand got an F. And deservedly so, he is really hard to use and fairly weak even as a 3 star. Even with Ludens, which is excellent on him, he has trouble actually making good use of his spell and requires too much investment early to be decent, which is not worth it in the long run. If you really want to play him, build Ludens and make sure that you 3 star him, especially in a Dragon Soul Mage comp, starring him and Aurelian probably. Diana's returned as a Spirit Assassin, and she isn't great. We tried her in a previous setup, replacing Moonlight with Spirit and Assassins, and she has trouble staying alive for long. However, she does well as a Swain item carrier as she uses similar items. So she might get an F, but don't despair if you get a Diana Chosen, and you can eke out some more use of it. Tank items like Bramble, GA, and Gunblade are all decent on her, but unless you find her Chosen, it's probably better to move along and leave her alone. That's gonna be it for our tier list. As more comps get discovered, we expect it to be less linear, with two costs rising in value and some three and four costs depreciating due to a more defined meta showing up. Festival of Beasts is looking amazing, so go enjoy it to the max and look forward to our must-play comps. As always, thanks for tuning in. Let us know in the comments if you have any feedback or questions. If you want to get better at TFT, visit ProGuys.com, where you can find a challenger coach to help you reach your dream rank. With all that being said, stay safe, stay healthy, and have a wonderful day. Peace.